36 past the hour, we are following developments out of Trump's New York criminal trial, which is now back underway. Dr. Robert Browning of C-SPAN Archives is on the stand at this time. I want to bring in, meanwhile, Alencia Johnson, chief impact officer of 1063 West Broad, a social impact consultancy. She served as a senior advisor to Biden's 2020 campaign. And Matthew Dowd served as chief strategist in the Bush-Cheney campaign. He is an MSNBC senior political contributor. So, Matthew, when Trump is not in court, he has rallies, right, in different places like, you know, battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin. Now that he's spending so much time inside the courtroom, how does this play into the calculus of where he goes or doesn't go? Well, I don't think Donald Trump's ever strategically traveled. I mean, I think more times than not, he's not traveling for campaigns. He's golfing or doing something else in the course of or having a party down at Mar-a-Lago. I think many times, and having been through this, President, uh, visits on presidential campaigns are overestimated these days on the impact they actually have. I think these have become national campaigns, and so your national voice is way more important than an individual going to Grand Rapids, for instance, and having some serious impact on Michigan. What you might say in California has as much impact on Michigan as what you might say in Grand Rapids. And so I don't think it's going to have that much impact. It doesn't seem to have had that so far, thus that much impact on this race in the battleground states and in nationally in this. We have a very competitive race. It's likely within a point or two either way, no matter how you look at this race. And so I think in the in the in in the most pointed way is this is a national campaign and is going to be played out nationally, even though the Electoral College is going to ultimately decide the race. And, you know, Alencia, in an interview, in a long interview with Time magazine, Trump said all kinds of things. But, but specifically, he said he would rely mostly on the National Guard to remove undocumented migrants from the country. Quote, if they weren't able to, the National Guard, then I'd use other parts of the military. Just wondering, Alencia, this is such a, an issue that Trump repeats over and over again. But in this Time magazine interview, he said that in his plans was to build new migrant holding centers so that millions of people could be deported. I'm just wondering, is this, clearly the former president thinks so, a winning strategy? The saddest thing is that for the extreme right base that he has, it does help him. But for people who want comprehensive immigration reform, which we know that it's been hard for any president to solve, this is not the way that they want to approach immigration. But the reality here is Donald Trump is making it very clear that he wants to weaponize the federal government against anyone he disagrees with or anyone that he does not like. And so people who believe that folks have the right to migrate, the right to refuge, they should be extremely concerned because if he's making these claims against immigrants and refugees, he's also made these kinds of claims against protesters, against anybody that disagrees with him. We better believe that Donald Trump will not only figure out how to do it, but he will do it even more egregiously than he's describing in that interview. And Matthew, I just want your thoughts on this because it, it it does, I guess, raise questions in a lot of people when you hear uh, Trump as a candidate say, saying that migrants poison the blood of America. And in this interview with Time, he also said that he would immediately go back to building the wall. He would reinstitute Title 42. He would reinstitute Remain in Mexico. All of these things that he had as his policy during his administration would now be repeated, but I guess put on steroids. Again, Matthew, what are your thoughts as far as what he thinks this will get him politically? He, he, he appeals to the worst instincts of the American Republic. I mean, and, and I can't believe that we're having this conversation in this time and in this age in the 21st century or the 22nd century or whatever the whatever and 21st century we're in is, I mean, didn't we learn our lesson with the Chinese Exclusion Act? Didn't we learn our lesson with interning Japanese? Didn't we learn our lesson through the trials and tribulations of the civil rights movement? Didn't we learn our lessons in so many against the Irish, against Jews, that 
that Donald Trump appeals to this worse instinct, which has a part of the American base in it that we've seen over 240 years. What Donald Trump is saying is, let's not lock up people from Sweden or Norway or uh, or Belgium or somewhere like that. Let's lock up people and let's do this to people that don't look like you. And when he says don't look like you, he's talking to white people. And so I can't believe that we're, we're still having this debate, but it gets in the soil of the American Republic. And we've, we've made this tragic mistake before. And Donald Trump is appealing to the worst, the worst of America.